Hi there, how's it? We're back. Mm -hmm. uh, please go check out the previous parts in order to gauge your bearings. Ne? Uh, I was speaking about magnanimity and uh, examples of it in the scriptures and how it is that Christ miraculously, like that, like people in the occult or people that have walked in dead deeds historically, uh, they undermine just how God can move by the Holy Spirit in the church to forgive and to also be in a position to, to position to judge and condemn somebody, but then choose not to. Because, you know, what you intended for evil, wickedness, the Lord has used it for good, the saving of many, many lives, right? So that magnanimous spirit of Joseph, of Jesus, of, um, you know, the, the, the early church with, with Saul, uh, who became Paul, and with Damascus, and of many testimonies that we now today are aware of, is it, it, it dwells in us by the Holy Spirit. He is the one that makes out of us new creations. But this world is very unforgiving. This world will hold you hostage for things you did in 1924. And Abazo Pumague about it. This is what you did on the 4th of August, 1924. You know what I'm saying? So because people in this world, because, okay, because narrow is the road that leads to life that few people find. And so therefore there are very few people who are truly, truly um, magnanimous. The majority of the world is what it is that most of us sort of kind of, you know, touch base with. We encounter all throughout our walk prior to coming to Christ. So our experience of the earth is one uh, where uh, is one of people that are very, very unforgiving. They hold grudges. They don't hold nothing back to let you know just how, what a nasty you be. All right. They don't do anything of that nature. And no matter how many, I remember before I came to Christ, when a person would say sorry to me, when my wounds were still very fresh, I would not them. I would not pay them. That is something that Christ changed. He flipped me, made out of me a new creation. Do you understand? So because of experience, memories of unforgiveness, like people that also, also, because of that memory, because, you know, people who come into Christ obviously come from the world. They are scared, witches especially. They are very, very nervous uh, to embrace Christ and come out in your testimony the bible says that we must confess our sins to one another that we might be healed and that we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony so confession is healing it is extremely healing it sets people free guys it gives abantu a second chance you understand what i'm saying uh, however there is a great undermining of the power of confession especially in new believers because of their historical um memories of how the world is do you understand what I'm saying? They know what lefati hali tuarele, lefati le hold the grudge, and so for those reasons, they think Google to yo. If I told them that I sacrificed my sister's two kids, if I told them that I used to change myself into a rodent and then enter into a house and steal pofoya me mamuloi, if only these people knew what they would give. Lengalo la kaho jaga hali tuarele kile hakana kina, mwana kaho jaga ha chesito yuko loi kina. That's why I'm wheelchairing. Just the prospect of coming out with that. Yo, they are like, They are going to want a stone me. And indeed, there will be people, Pharisaical, who will try to cast a stone. But if you are truly indwelt by the Holy Spirit, you will always be embraced by heaven's conglomerate. The church of Christ on earth is a miraculous body walking around. We are a powerful, mighty, very phenomenal, like, mysterious bunch of folk. We are, we are strangely magnanimous in the sense that literally it's water under the bridge. It's, you know, Nicodemus upon asking Christ what one needs to do to get born again saved. The law says you must be born again. Uh, and the, he then goes on to just explain what a, the, the, the new birth is unseen. It's like, you know, the wind blowing and you see the effects of the wind because, you know, the leaves are moving on a tree but and you know it's there. However, it's invisible, right? It is a mystery. The redemption of a person, how it is that you see just the same old fashioned carabo, right? Physically. Mara, these changed. Like she's different. This chick is now easygoing. Where before, one of the type of who better graduates are up and just fella walking around. She was into certain things and now she's like literally so pliable. Like she's palatable. Like, you know, I, I can taste it. Like uh, she's literally an easy taste on my, on my, on the, on my tongue. What's I have before Nale hard to be in the presence of because Una do like what you like to but I'm mood swingy type establishment thing like uh, what do you call this thing transformation Yamoto Hapulu Sidwe guys is I mean the person is still the same one so it's like the wind invisible you don't see anything other than the fact that they are a transformed human being easy yes or Zabo Uyazi Bona Lomuntu Uchinji let's say different personality transformation overnight just like that same voice Maya Kuluma 
same general mannerisms there's something it different and she's palatable now christians are palatable we are pliable and receptive to sorry repassive we are pacified soothed by apologies the Bible says, forgive 70 times, seven times. He does not only prescribe that that be a thing, but he actually makes it possible. It works. It breaks them down into tears because it's unbelievable that it eventually came. Mar. Askisi is pacifying to a Christian. An apology is pacifying to a Christian. Admitting, confessing that I did it and I'm really sorry is pacifying. The chick or the dude could be out of their mind mad at spiritual warfare and she's throwing stones at them. Um... I'm spiritually attacked. I'm But as soon as one mutagati turns around and is like, I'm sorry, I did it. All of a sudden, she's here. She's here. She's here. We're here. Garawa is here. She's in spiritual war. She's antsy. She's like spinning on the spot like like an atom. She's vibrating on the spot. To throw in a punch. And then somebody's like, Garawa's kiss. It's like, yo, Joe. It takes your hands down. An apology is pacifying. I would know that because all throughout the years, my family members in the bank shabaka on and off, on and off, light switch on and off, on and off, mood swings on and off, on and off. And during the times when they're off, I'm ready to throw in a, you know, a, a fast one, a punch, a fend. Do you know what I mean? And then next thing Moto comes back and not so much, they've never apologized to me, Gamanzui. They've never admitted, right? Their deeds change in the sense that the person goes from being hostile towards me, treating me like trash, and I'm all passive aggressive to I'm um, defensive. From their direction, and then they walk in. Hi, can I have a hug? You nice apple. Eh, I got you this top. What do you think of it? And I thought that you might like it. And I'm like, but yesterday you were busy yelling at me. But the day before, um, it pacifies me. Despite the fact that I know they are mood swingy, they will literally keep doing this pen like me, yo yoing me. I've been begging God to take me out of this environment because of that. It's patronizing. It is so easy for me. Yeah. It is so easy for me to be like, it's so easy. All it takes is for you to stop being mean. Stop being mean. And the next thing I'm like, and I calm down in and of myself. And then I'm happy I'm walking up and down on sunshine, you know, floating around with you. And then girls, I know you're hostile again. And I'm like, but God, this is emotional abuse. This is emotional abuse. Like, I, I can't take it. I can't. I mean, they've just caused Nabat Zabar, you don't know every time you flip like a pancake ginger. All they need to do is smile, nyana, and I'll take it. Get hatched, get exhausted. I've been begging God to rescue me from the constant yo yo that they're in because it works on me. So because they were yo yo, now I'm in here. Da, ha, da, ha, da. Wa smell like a smell. Like a baby, you know, the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. It is written in God's word. And you know, the law says that the kingdom of heaven belongs to children because kids are like that. Like, like you do something that upsets the kid. But as soon as you're like, I'm sorry, little Johnny. I'm sorry, little Pinky. Pinky's like, hey, hey, hey. Next thing, what's it? It's so easy to appease a child. They forgive so easily. They are mad, pneumonious. They literally hold no record of past wrongs. You get, they get over themselves and their sorrow and their pity and their pain as soon as their mom stops acting a fool. Christians are like that. We are like children. We're like babies. And it's unfortunate and fortunate at the same time because that is what enables us to indeed remain pure in the sight of God for forgive and you will be forgiven. But if you don't forgive, then your sins won't be forgiven you. You understand? So God enables us. Remember, what works he has begun in us, he finishes them and he will give us everything we need in order to live a life in godliness. So he would never abandon us to unforgiveness. He would never let us stay bitter when somebody has hurt us. So that magnanimity causes the world then to take us for granted. But at least, uh, do you understand? Nah, it's okay. And that's how you know somebody's truly saved. Ha, uh, if, if they're pacifiable, if you can put a dummy in a Christian's mouth, then you know it's a Christian. Uh, you know you're struggling or you're dealing with a person that is either unregenerate or they are rebellious. If it's not coming around, a Christian embraces an apology, guys. Um, that's how you know by the, by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We have got magnanimity. We are able to receive apologies. Next part.